Hi, we're going to be making this fantasy picture here, a girl with this elephant following in behind her, by merging three photos together in a lot of the little tricks to get this look just right. And we'll start off up here with this background image, and we then have this girl picture right here, and here is that elephant. So you have all those three pieces. Now you can get these images if you want to. There's a download link for that in the description. And you can then download these all to work along with this project if you want to. We'll start off here with the background, and all I want to do here is just to remove that bench right down below. So let's zoom in on that. And just over here, I've made a duplicate of the background. I'm doing this on the duplicate so I don't touch my original background layer. And that's easy. Just right-click and choose Duplicate Layer to get that. Okay, let's just grab one of our selection tools. I'll just use the standard selection tool. I have my feathering set here at zero, and I'll just make a selection just right here around this park bench, just like that. And just work right around in here. There we go and back over here again and then go up to edit come down to fill selection and choose content aware here from the drop down list everything else stays the same choose ok there we go almost perfect I need to fix a little bit right down in here and we need to fix that in there but it's a pretty good match for everything else select deselect and we'll zoom in on that and do a little bit of repair work this time i'll change my selection tool over here to the polygonal lasso and I'll make a more careful selection just right around in here. I'm kind of coming down and just doing a selection that fits what the tree should be, doing kind of a rough edge, random tree look in here. And just maybe just a little bit wider like that right down here somewhere. Then I'll pull that around right here on the grass and just leave that bit of grass in. And then you can come out here just a bit and then go back up to your starting position, which is right about there. There we go. So there's our selection. Now in here I'll be doing some clone stamp. I just want to clone stamp from up here a bit and from over in here a little bit. Grab our clone stamp tool. That brush size is pretty big. I'll work my brush size down a bit. It's a soft edge brush. And that's pretty good. There's a brush size. Now to use this tool you go over here and you hold Alt key and click and that selects that area. You can see it right there. I can then pull that down and actually paint that right on top of my other area down below. And this allows us to bring some of that coloration in. I'm just going to follow along and that's pretty good. Let's do one more of those. Alt click and come down here. And I think right over here a bit of this dark stuff and put a bit of that just right in here like that. And that should work out pretty well. Now for this bit over here, I'm just going to invert that selection. So select inverse. The outside part now is selected. And for this, let's go over here and just grab just outside here, right here, Alt, and click right here. And let's pull that in. I'll pull straight to the side like that. And that should work out just fine. There we go. That's fixed. Okay, select, deselect. And let's go back here and zoom fit screen. That's just a spot right down there. So there we go, that's all taken care of. Okay, our background is now finished. Let's now bring in our other images. And we'll start by floating this image here. Just pull the tab down like that. Now, if you don't have floating windows, go up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General. And this is line right here, Allow Floating Documents. Make sure that's checked. Choose OK, and it's now floating. And the reason for this is I can grab the background and just drag it into my other image like that. And that transfers that in as a new layer real easy. Okay, she's a bit too large. You see here in the corners, we have these control handles. If you don't see those, just use a control T keyword shortcut. And you'll see those. I'm going to pull that down until we get her down to about the right size. We can readjust her size a little bit later if we want to. But I think right about here is pretty good. Just eyeballing that. So she's about the same height as this bunch of leaves right over here. Choose OK. OK, we now need to remove the background on her. I'm going to put it right in the middle. And let's hide that background so it has something to work with. Let's try the subject select. It sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. We'll see how well it does here. Select and subject. Let that figure it out. OK, not bad, not great, but we can fix that. Now it's just a selection, so let's convert this into a layer mask up here. Click on the layer mask button. It's now a layer mask. We can now see where things have gotten messed up. Let's zoom in on this. This should take care of most of our problems, but the back of the shoe here is missing. We can fix that. A little bit right here is kind of messed up. That's kind of messed up right down here. Most of the rest of the leg is okay. This side is okay. Bit of a problem right here. And if I'm pulling down here, I'm holding the space bar down for this. And we have this problem right in here. I need to fix that and the back over here, and that bit of the hat right there. So there's a few problems on this, but I think we can fix all this stuff fairly quickly and easily here with just a few different tricks. First off, make sure you're on the layer mask side, and we need to repair this shoe. Now white shows black hides. I have my foreground color here as white. Here's the paintbrush. Let's give this a decent size. I'm gonna try 20 pixels and see what that looks like. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna paint white right on the layer mask, and that shows that shoe again. Let's take it outside just a little ways, 
So we get the whole shoe in there. There we go. Okay, the whole shoe is showing again. And let's get the front of the shoe right here. I know I have some laces up in here. So let me bring those laces back in again so I can see those. Okay, that's fine. Make sure we get the back in here. That looks pretty good. There's the back of the shoe. Okay, that's good. Now on the leg, let's just paint in that section again in here. We'll fix that. So it repairs that. Pull the space bar down and let's pull this around. And so we can do up in here. There's a little bit on the hat right here. I need to just kind of firm that up right there again with that same color. Coming down the back, we have this little bit right there. So this one, we can fix that fairly easily here just by painting on that with black. I'll reverse our colors, bring our brush size down. Let's try five pixels. There it is. And we can zoom in on that. There we go. Back to our paintbrush. It's a hard edge brush. I'm just going to brush right against the edge. I'm painting black onto the layer mask and then just painting that out. There we go. Okay, that's fine. Let's go over here to the other side. Same thing for the shoe. I'm just going to paint on the layer mask and paint out that little bit of a section. This is for the easy stuff in here. Just that back edge right there. Okay. Now it's a bit more difficult on this stuff around here. There's a lot more to do. Space bar. Let's move it over to here. This time I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll start down here at the heel and then just come in and carefully place points like this. Now don't click too fast or your selection will collapse. So just work your way around like this and we'll make a selection clear around the laces and everything this way. And we'll then use that to paint in and clean this up. And right around here, a couple little spots like that. And then over into here and down. And this will be pretty small on the finished image. So if you're a little bit off here, it's really not going to show. Okay, work our way around here and let's get this lace in right here. There we go. Now I'm just coming in right along kind of that fuzzy edge, right in the middle of the fuzzy edge right there and just making a nice careful selection. And we'll use that as a protection so we can then use the paintbrush to come in and clean out all that stuff from the background. Okay, right around in here. There we go. And Around this lace up here, we're just about done with this. There we go. So this part has to be done manually because the select subject just didn't do a good job in here. Okay, come outside and clear around and then right back to your beginning point, which is right here. That's now selected. Let's go back to our paintbrush tool. I want to hide, so that's a black color. That's all fine. And then just come in here and quickly paint right against that. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is because it's easier to control that pointer, making that selection than it is to control your brush. So this will give you a much cleaner result. And just paint out all the stuff you don't want. And this is just painting black right on the layer mask. We'll do this step clear around our figure. There we go, it's good. Control D to deselect that. Shoe is fine. We'll get the back of that leg as a last step in here. But first I'm going to go up here, hold the space bar down. You can then move your whole image around. And let's do the same trick right in here. So back to the polygonal lasso tool and I'll start right here on the hat and let's just come right around the hat, just like that. And again, exact same trick as before. We're just going to paint out that section in there. It doesn't need to be perfectly perfect in here. Again, it's pretty small and the flowers are gonna blend into the background a little bit. So again, you can be just a little bit looser through this section and it's gonna look just fine. Okay, up around here, this little flower other little flower over there and then our suction will be made you can leave some of that in there we go right around here right down here i'll leave a bit of that shadow in right there and then out and around back to your starting point there it is back to the paintbrush and let's quickly paint that out right along that edge there it is and get the rest of this stuff in here cleaned out so that fixes that whole section this is the old way of doing this and before i would do this for the whole figure but this is a lot faster letting Photoshop elements come in and do a lot of that work for us. That looks okay here. We can do the exact same trick back here for the stuff off of the hat. Now let's come right up here to the top and let's get some of these little wispy type things coming off of our hat in here, little ribbony type things. And then clear down here. Let's catch that one right down there, around the bottom, and then up to here again. Now in here, there's a couple of interior spots we need to get. So I'll show you how that is done in just a sec. I think this one comes clear down to here. So I'll do it like that around this part of the hat and around the hair right there. Then outside, Back to our starting point, and I want to add in this little bit right in here and a couple of little spots right down here. So let's come down to the options and choose Add, and make another selection right inside here, just like that. That adds that to our selection. There it is. And then let's come down here. I'm going to get this little triangle bit right here. There we go. And this little bit right down in here. And back to our starting point. Okay, there we go. Back to the paintbrush, 
and let's just paint right along that selection. See how easy this is when you have these real complicated areas to make a protection selection like that first. Okay, now for this little bit right here, I'm going to reverse this, select inverse, and I'll change my colors to white and foreground, and then I'll paint right down here and get that little bit. I could kind of barely see that before, so that brings that in. Okay, same thing, select, deselect, that's good. Let's zoom back to fit screen. Everything's fine except for the front of this toe here and that bit in the leg. Let's check the front of the toe. A little bit here, bit down here. I think we're actually pretty much okay. Let's just do this by hand. This should be a fast one without doing any fancy selections. I have my white, which shows, and I'll paint in here. Let's see if we can find the front of that shoe. The bottom's okay. That's good. Let's just reverse our colors and I'll just hand paint that. That's an easy little bit here. Do the same thing right back here and do that by hand. There we go. A little bit on the back side here. A little bit of grass there is fine. That will just blend in with our picture. Okay, that's good. Now for the tricky part, and that's right up here. And we'll be doing a little bit of airbrushing in here. But I want to come down and fix a bit of the section here. Now, I still have this on white. Go over here to the white color. Come down right along that edge. This looked a little bit soft on that edge, and I was right. There we go. Okay, switch over to black. We're a little bit right around the edge here. And I'm just eyeballing this. And just going carefully on that. There we go. Now, I'm using a mouse. And notice how it's really pretty smooth on that. And that's because I'm using a wrist wrist with my mouse pad. It makes it much, much easier. Okay, now we need to do this bit here. We'll do this with a larger brush. That's a pretty good size right here, 25. I want this to be a soft brush. I click in here. Let's come down and find a nice soft brush at about 25. 27 will do. Soft edge brush. Now, I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool. And let's get some of this color right in here. So let's go over here to the image side. Double click on that. There's our image side, light blue outline. Again, right down here. Right in this section here, just grab some of that. There's that color. Back to our paintbrush. And then come out here. And I'm just going to basically airbrush in a little bit like that until I have that bit gone. And that's pretty good right there. Okay, now let's go back to our eyedropper tool. Let's grab a little bit right down here, but darker area right there. Back to our brush. Same thing, come out and then kind of work your way in a little bit. I'm gonna go a little larger on my brush size here. A bit of a softer edge, just like that. And that finishes that up. Let's now go back to fit on screen. And girls finished. The short background again. There we go. Notice how that one shoe just blends into the ground. That's fine. Let's make sure we're still on our correct layer up here. And we'll put her right about there with that foot right at the bottom of the screen. And that's a pretty good spot there. Okay, that's good. Let's now bring in that elephant. Same basic idea. Here's the elephant. Let's float this. Now he's facing the wrong direction, so I want to flip this image. So I'll go up here to image, come down to rotate, and then flip horizontal. That's the right direction. And then just pull him in and let go. Close that down. I'm not going to bother saving that. There's the elephant. The size is about where I want it. That's good. And again, let's hide everything else. And I'll do the select subject, see how this looks on this one. This should be better. And that looks fine, clear around there. Right down below here, we lost a little bit with that shadow in there. So we'll take care of that a little bit on the toe. First, let's just make this into a layer mask, layer mask right here. And then zoom in on that one spot right there. I think that's all that needs to be fixed, really. There's that one foot right here. A little bit of grass there, a bit of a toe right here. Okay, back to our paintbrush tool. Make sure you're on the layer mask side. Black hides and white shows. So I'm just going to get a larger brush this time, maybe 15 pixels. There it is. And then just come in. It's a bit too soft right here. So let's change this to a hard edge brush. I'll just roll up here and grab 13 is good. Hard edge brush and just brush out that shadow right in there. There we go. And along the front side of this foot right here and get rid of that bit. Okay, that's fixed. Reverse our colors and a little bit of this toe right there, which I know is missing. Okay, there we go. This time that worked out pretty well. Go back to fit on screen. So, okay, let's show everything else. There's our elephant. Let's get the elephant down into position right about here. Put the foot at the bottom of the screen again. Let's now work on fitting these images better into the picture by adjusting our colors and values. The elephant's a bit more work, so let's get the girl out of the way. Just a couple things here. I want to color balance and fit our background better and also increase the contrast just a little bit. So we'll do that with a couple of adjustment layers. So we'll start off here with layer, come down to new adjustment layer, and let's do a photo filter where it says use previous layer. Check that, choose okay, and here we go. Now I'm using the warming filter 85, that's the correct one, and one just a bit warmer than this. I'm just going to type in a number here. You can actually just type in like that, hit the enter key. She now blends in better with our colors. So that takes care of the coloration. Let's now increase her contrast a little bit in here. Same thing, layer, come down to adjustment layer. This time let's use levels, same thing. 
check that checkbox, choose OK. Now on the left side, this is the dark, so we pull this in, that makes the darks darker, and that increases our contrast a bit as well. We don't need to increase the whites, they're fine. So on the left hand side, I'm going to change this one here to 21, that's what I used before, it looks good. Let's just move our mid-tone control here to a 0.86, and I think that matches into our scene nicely, just a little bit of levels control. Let's now go over to the elephant. Now the first thing I want on the elephant is to bring in some shadowing from our leaves up here. So let's do our shadowing layer first on this. So come down to our background copy layer right here and then take any selection tool. I'll just use the regular old lasso tool and I'll do a lasso right around some of the leaves right in here. Just a little thing, just like that, just a little selection in here. Let's take this to a new layer. So it's layer new via copy, there we go. Now take this new layer and move it above the elephant layer. Just drag it up to the very top of the elephant layer. I'll hide that background so you can see that. There it is. Back to our move tool. And we'll be using this on the elephant. Now it's not really exactly where I want it, but it's pretty good. It's pretty close. If you want to, we can flip this layer just for interest. Go up to image, just come down to rotate and then flip layer horizontal. Just reverses that. That's pretty good. Now notice it's going way off our elephant. So let's make this into a clipping mask on our elephant. So right click on the layer and create clipping mask. It's now just showing just on the elephant. Now if I move it around, notice that I can readjust the position here on the elephant. I think right around it here is pretty good. Let's now I'll give it more of a shadow effect and for that go up to filter filter gallery right here and the one I'm using is in the sketch filters right here and it's photocopy and I have mine set right in the middle here detail at 12 and darkness at 24 gives us a nice kind of black look on that black and white we now need to blend this in with our elephant in the background so go here to the blend modes and come down to Veneer Burn, and that shows just those leaves. Bring our opacity down, and I'll set this at 41. And there we go, we now have some nice leaves coming in, leaf shadows. Okay, let's bring our background back in again. She's in the warm side, but the elephant is going from warm side into a cool side. We need that same kind of an effect in here on the elephant. Let's go back down here to the elephant layer. And I'll go back up to layer, come down to new fill layer. This time we'll do a gradient in here. Make sure this is still checked choose OK. It should be. Now here's first at the angle to zero and then click on the gradient. You want to have a custom gradient right down below here. So we'll start off left hand side. Click on that color stop right here. Click into the color and in this one let's set this color to FCA 65E. This is kind of a pinkish color. Kind of a warm color matches our colors over in here. Choose OK. Now right here in the middle this is I move up just next to that line and get that kind of a pointer finger click on that, that gives you a new color stop right here. Go back to your color, and this time let's set this one at FF7983, kind of a pinkish color. It's a midway color between our two colors, there we are. Let's go over here, right hand side. Before we do that, go over here, click on this top one. This is our opacity, let's change the opacity here to 100%, and come down, click on our bottom color stop right here, click on the color again, and this time let's do 045482. It's kind of a nice bluish color, choose OK. There's our new gradient and choose OK and OK. And there's that coloration on the elephant. Now we need to blend this in with our elephant layer. So back up here to the blend modes. This time come down to soft light and that puts that coloration right there into the elephant. Now it looks pretty good. There's our basic coloration shift. I want to have more blue at the right hand side. So we'll do this with a secondary layer. Let's go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. Let's go back to our photo filter in here. Again, make sure that check mark is checked, choose OK. And this time come down and we're going to be using a cooling filter, 82, which is a good match for that coloration right over here. Here's our cooling filter. Let's change the density here to 82. So it's a real strong blue right now. And close that down. Let's now bring the opacity down on this one a bit. I'll have my opacity up here set to 37%. So it's not quite as strong. And I want it just over here on the back side of the elephant. So for that, we have our layer mask right here. We're on our layer mask side, as you can see. Let's go over here to our gradients. This time, come down here where it says edit. Click on that, change to the first gradient here. This is a foreground to background gradient. Choose OK. Where it says reverse, just do that. It's now black to white. Right down here, let's change this to linear. And then on the left side of the elephant, just pull over here to the right hand side like that. And that gives us a little bit of the blue. And there we go. So that only shows just this back end in here with that new photo filter color using that gradient. Okay, that's all looking fine. Last thing to do in here is to adjust our levels in the elephant. So same trick, layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. Again, make sure that checkbox is checked, choose okay. 
and we want to increase our contrast again like we did before. I'll set the black at 22. It means a bit more contrasty. And let's just move our mid control here to the right just a little bit. I'll actually type this in at 0.91. Just a little bit of a move here on that center mid-tone control. Last thing I want to do is I want to have it darker on the bottom of the elephant's feet down here. A bit on the light hand side. It looks good up here, but it's not really what I want at the bottom. So one more trick, and this will take a couple of steps to adjust this. Right here on the elephant layer, right click where it says layer 2, choose duplicate layer, choose OK. Now as soon as you do that, all of these adjustment layers get messed up. We'll fix that in just a second. So take this layer, pull it clear to the top like that, hide that layer, and then down here we'll fix all these. Click on the gradient fill, right click, and create clipping mask. Photo filter, right click, create clipping mask. Levels, right click, create clipping mask. And then layer three up here, this is our shadows, right click and create clipping mask. They all now fit back in as they should be. And we have this copy of our elephant sitting up here on top. Now this time, we're going to blend this in with our elephant. So let's click on that elephant layer. Now I want to get rid of this layer mask in here. So an easy way to do that is to right click and simplify layer. It's now just the elephant without that layer mask. So it's just clear background. Let's change our blend mode here. Come down to overlay. That darkens everything down. I only want to see just the feet section. So let's put a new layer mask in here. There we go. Let's go back over here to our gradient tool. We have it still set up properly. And I want to set this to black in the foreground. Right down here, it looks good. And still a linear gradient. And then pull straight down, just like that, and just about halfway down through the legs. So it only is showing that new layer up here on the legs down below. And that darkens down the legs. So if I hide and show that, you see there it is. I'm darkening down the lower part of the elephant right now. So there we go. That is doing a fantasy picture using a lot of different tricks in here inside of Photoshop Elements. And I'll see you next time.